So good morning to uh, all participants and uh, uh, I'm also very happy to participate in such a uh, format. So a few words about me. Uh, I'm here in Vilnius to the north from Slovenia. So uh, I'm with Rital together for almost 11 years, have a FD degree in mechanical engineering and I'm a head of the IT Competence Center, which is one of the uh, centers established by RITAL globally. So we have uh, one in the US, one in Germany, being a German company, definitely. Uh, then we have one in India, in China, and I have honor to be, to be the head of uh, the Lithuanian one. So we are taking care about the projects uh, for data centers, uh, mostly in the Eastern, Eastern Europe, uh, sometimes also taking care about uh, global requests as well, because we are part of the network. So I have ATD as a kind of a quality sign, I would say, uh, so and some uh, DC professional uh, achievements as well. So today I will be talking about uh, cooling technology because uh, actually, you know, there are a lot of different cooling technologies in the market. So starting from very traditional DX, uh, chilled water, and uh, moving now, <clears throat> as I understood uh, from the previous presentation, it was already uh, touched by, uh, by the company. Uh, so it was about uh, immersion cooling, for example, or chip cooling and others. So all of these technologies, they definitely have uh, technical special details in application yeah so the often question that we have uh, from the customer is what is the best for his particular case and this question isn't uh, easy to, to to answer so i would split the, uh, the these questions into two types so first of them uh, one one of them uh, are uh, have technical origin and the other uh, the others have uh, financial origin. So uh, as engineer, I am more uh, involved in the technical ones. Yeah? So and there are a lot of uh, different points that we have to take care of. So starting from the climate of the country, the targets that the customer has, the site, size, the capacity, the IT equipment which is installed. For example, again, talking about raising temperatures in um, data centers, uh, we have to uh, think of new generation data centers mostly because uh, older equipment uh, will definitely not be happy with the elevated temperatures in the data center. Also, a huge impact has the geometry of the data center. So, I mean, the height, slab to slab, the shape of the, uh, of the uh, space that is available. The target PUE, so often it's a kind of a benchmark for different uh, vendors and different technologies. Uh, but is just claiming about uh, energy efficiency sufficient for choosing the right one? Definitely not. So we are talking about the combination of different factors. So on the other, on the other uh, side, uh, talking about the financial things, uh, mostly people are focused on the um, purchase cost. So in other words, on CapEx, capital expenditures. So at the level uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the project, I mean, when, it's, when, it, when it only starts and the customer has uh, multiple uh, quotes from different vendors, uh, it's very often that he looks just for the most cheap one and uh, tries to compare apples to apples, as he think, or apples to peers, as we know. So not only the CapEx matters, because this is one of the messages of the, uh, of the presentation that I am going to show, uh, we are all, all also thinking uh, rarely, but still, we want to uh, direct the customer's attention in the direction of the uh, operational expenditures, uh, the availability of the uh, maintenance, and so on. So, 
trying to combine all this into one, uh, we have done a, a typical assessment for the data center installation. It's a small one. Definitely, our approach can be used for bigger data centers, and this is uh, what we are doing for our customers. Um, if we are talking about 500 kilowatts or one mega or even more, um, this makes the choice even more complex and uh, more responsible. So this is the reason why uh, this, uh, this approach to evaluation of the data center technology, cooling technologies, uh, is versatile. So in this case, we are looking for a small installation. I would even would call it a kind of a example of the edge data center, or it could be a, just a traditional uh, server room for a small customer who needs only two racks for service, for example, with uh, something like eight kilowatts per rack. Again, just what we heard before about the average density, it, there is a coincidence here. And the network rack with probably an UPS, which uh, also generates something like four kilowatts of heat. So altogether, this uh, generates uh, the heat load of approximately 20 kilowatts. Um, I have chosen two technologies which are very often met, and this is a very traditional competition for us as a manufacturer. So we are competing uh, with a professional solution with uh, inline units, inline cooling units, uh, using uh, direct expansion principles. So the, the, the most uh, the most well known on the market, let's say, and the split units which are uh, designed for industrial cooling or comfort cooling. For example. So uh, we also need to equalize, let's say, the conditions. And uh, for doing this, as a benchmark, we would use uh, ASHRAE uh, recommendations for the temperature, so maximum 27 degrees at the inlet. We also have to consider that all units inside the racks are blanket. It's necessary for proper airflow management. Uh, for some countries, it could be higher. For some, it could be uh, lower. But let's assume that it's a Slovenian case for uh, one kilowatt hour, approximately 12 euro cents, similar like in Lithuania, by the way. And uh, we also know that the energy price increases with time, so let's consider it's 2%. Okay, so uh, as I uh, started with the splitting into technical and financial things, um, let's start with the technical assessment. And this technical assessment uh, that we do is done using the uh, computational fluid dynamics, CFD, in other words. So, I think all of you know what is CFD. So it's a kind of a, a numerical analysis, numerical method means computers are used extensively for uh, analyzing the temperature and the velocity and pressure of air volume in the data center. Not only, actually, uh, this technology is widely used uh, for electronics uh, from the smallest level, like chip cooling, for example, to server, then to rack and to the complete server room or even data center exterior parts like chillers, for example. So the idea is uh, quite uh, simple and uh, relatively easy to, uh, to, to, to work with. So we build the module, uh, the model, uh, using the very uh, realistic uh, 3D models with the special features in it. So for example, it could be uh, the leakage of air through the, uh, through the rack, or uh, if we have the servers installed, definitely we can uh, specify the model of the server, for example, Dell something or HP something, and it will act as a real server in this virtual environment. So uh, this allows us to create a very um, realistic model. So for example, we can uh, even include there the pipes or some other obstacles, the power distribution elements and so on. So after solving this model, we can compare, uh, especially if we have the case with the existing data center, we can compare and validate these results. 
means that we calculate the temperatures and then we can measure the temperatures and uh, see what is the difference. If the difference is minor, then we can say that the model, the virtuality, let's say, is, uh, is uh, adequate to the reality. And then some images that you see here, for example, presenting the results, temperatures, uh, air flows, pressures, and so on. So, uh, the application of this uh, technology should be in two stages of the data center lifetime. So, we consider that it can be used during the design process very actively. Uh, why? Because we need to uh, validate the existing design. So, for example, you set up a model with uh, multiple crack units or, or inline units or uh, indirect uh, diabetic cooling or whatever. And then uh, you set up the, uh, the racks with a certain kilowatts per rack, heat load, and you can visualize and test virtually how the system operates. So it uh, gives you um, certain, uh, certain uh, belief yeah, that the data center with these uh, selected components will work fine. Also, you can see what happens in case of uh, failure. If you uh, normally uh, design the data center with certain redundancy and plus one and plus two to n or whatever, you can see what happens if one of system fails, for example. So also you can uh, specify such uh, more complex uh, conditions like what happens if one chilled water system fails and you have a transient process in time. So this helps a lot to curious engineers. During the operation, we can optimize the data center, uh, means that we can uh, set up the units uh, according to the CFD results. Uh, we can also do some changes if necessary. So for example, install additional IT equipment in certain racks and see how the cooling system reacts to this. And we also can uh, analyze the performance using the uh, built-in indicators and the uh, ASHRAE compliance criteria. So this technology, uh, CFD, it definitely decreases CAPEX. Why? Because uh, you can be sure that this number of units that you uh, selected is sufficient and you no, do not need to uh, provide any overcapacity. Then uh, it also decreases OPEX because uh, you are optimizing uh, the energy efficiency and uh, achieving better performance. So you can uh, be safe in changes and you can know what your, what your cooling system uh, may provide for you. However, uh, in all new technologies, there are some, I wouldn't say doubts, but some important concerns. And also, uh, CFD is not a miracle if you connect it to DCIM system, for example. Uh, it's not uh, working like you probably expect, because DCIM uh, is a live system, and CFD is more a kind of a calculation, calculation method. So we also have to think about the balance between the accuracy and the time wasted. So if uh, it's just a CFD uh, study, uh, then you should think before you uh, use it continuously during the operation of the data set. So, coming back to our example, I think that uh, CFD is the best uh, evidence of the operation. And here you see these two scenarios that we have selected. On the left side, we have the uh, LCP units or inline cooling units with uh, the X technology and uh, the uh, hot air containment. So you practically see that the blue field is virtually has a, virtually the same temperature, the same color, and in the hot air we have uh, some green and uh, yellow and red fields which uh, shows us uh, the elevation of the temperature out of the race. On the right side, uh, we have no 
containment, and this uh, brings certain uh, potential issues that we do not feel so far. But if you look at, at the details, you may see that in front of the rack, the temperature uh, rises to light blue level. So it's still okay. It's still something around uh, 25 degrees. And in ashray uh, envelope, however, uh, it's important to, to understand what will happen if one of the units uh, ever fails. We also can uh, visualize what happens to our systems uh, using the airflow temperature uh, tool. So you see here again on the left, the professional solution, let's say, and uh, on the right side, the, the solution that we meet very often in, in reality. Yeah, so what is important also is the fact that here on the left side, we install only necessary uh, necessary number of units. You remember I um, mentioned that we have something like 20 kilowatts per, uh, per this installation. However, on the right side, you see that the units, there are four of them, and uh, each of them, we, as we assume it has uh, 10 kilowatts of capacity. So it means that, in fact, we have uh, 30 plus 10 kilowatts of cooling capacity in the right example. This overcapacity means uh, uh, higher cost as well for the uh, as a capital expenditures. It also requires a little bit more space. Yeah? So what could be uh, sometimes an issue uh, choosing the, the route for such a compact installation. So as I mentioned, the most uh, dramatic things happen when the cooling unit, the redundant cooling unit fails. And here you see what, uh, what is happening according to the CFD study results. On the left side, we see a certain increase of the temperature, so light blue, but still something around 27 degrees. This happens because the cooling unit's capacity is very similar to the capacity of the heat, uh, of the heat load that we uh, have in the racks. We also see that the temperature in the hotel rises a lot to something like 40 degrees, what is uh, still okay. But what is the most important that we do not uh, see any, um, uh, any of two main troubles in the uh, data center cooling systems. These two main troubles, these are the uh, bypass of the hot air and uh, of the cold air story and uh, the recirculation of the hot air so looking at the right picture you may see uh, what happens if uh, the cooling uh, system is uh, not uh, professional enough for managing the task so first of all the hot air coming out of the racks uh, goes in the direction of, of the front of the racks not in the direction of the cooling units so we have the recirculation issue when the hot air comes back to the uh, to the intake of the IT. Then uh, we obviously see the same issues uh, with the airflow pattern. Uh, it looks like some of the uh, split units are idle instead of doing necessary help, providing necessary help to the others. So what is uh, again? Uh, impacting the energy consumption by the uh, cooling system. So let's switch now to financial assessment. Uh, what we are using as a workflow is an estimation of OPEX and CAPEX, uh, which gives us together the total cost of ownership. So it's always necessary to talk uh, to the customer, not about the 100% uh, of the IT load, talking about the, the data center at the end of life, let's say. But typically, the data center starts with uh, zero of IT load and then grows up in two, three years to 30, 50, 50%. During this time, it's also important to, uh, to, to, to take care about energy efficiency and uh, uh, data center expenditures. If we look at CapEx evaluation, uh, you may see on the left slide that the cost of this professional solution is almost twice higher. This is true. Uh, 
talking about uh, uh, in cooling cost per kilowatt of the rack, it's also significant difference and significant numbers, which are explained by the uh, small uh, capacity of the installed system. The OPEX evaluation, however, is uh, beneficial to more professional, uh, professional solution. So you see that the OPEX is almost twice lower comparing to the uh, split units. This happens due to the better energy efficiency and lower power consumption, energy consumption by, uh, by the professional cooling units. They are more manageable, they are more predictable, more controllable, and uh, performing better than the uh, non-professional solution. If we again switch to, um, to the graphs and analyze the system performance uh, at different IT load percentages, so remember, we were talking that it's important to evaluate it not only at full load, but also at partial. So here we see uh, the graphs, the green one for split units and uh, the blue one for uh, inline units. And you see that if you just look from the financial perspective, even if you have 100% of IT load during 10 years, what is not realistic, the payback term, this is true, is quite long so it starts from six years and uh, is up to 10 years in case of upload however if you look just from financial perspective and do not think about this uh, cooling performance you could do the wrong choice in this case if you uh, consider both tcos of of the systems uh, in 10 years perspective you could have certain savings uh, or at least you see that the performance of the systems is very similar or the total cost of ownership of the systems is very similar so this means that uh, it's important to evaluate the uh, full lifetime of the data center and not only uh, the capital expenditures for some bigger players, for some bigger data centers, you can also uh, think of the cooling cost as a kind of a commodity of energy source. So for your data center, it's important to have only uh, power and cooling. And here you may see that the cost of the cooling of one kilowatt hour would be almost equivalent to the cost of the, uh, of the uh, equipment of the energy, electric energy itself. So some conclusions. First of all, yeah, we need professional cooling when we, we meet the raising uh, and uh, heat, heat uh, density in the rack. So starting from something like four kilowatts per rack, it's not more um, possible to cool it down with the traditional uh, split units. So airflow management is also a key to the functionality and effectiveness of the system. What is also important is to think about OPEX and not only about CAPEX. In this case, the OPEX for less energy efficient systems, which are DX or split units or similar, uh, often OPEX many times is higher than CAPEX. So this is important to, you know, to have in mind when choosing. And uh, the TCO methodology would allow to the customer uh, to understand more transparently the costs that are uh, expecting him in the, uh, in the lifetime of the data center. It's also important to uh, think about uh, partial load because partial load uh, has a significant uh, impact on the final results of the uh, cooling system uh, total cost of launch. That's it from my side.